Uh, I'm Shane Miller. I'm uh, one of the pediatric sports medicine uh, non-operative physicians here at Scottish Rite. And uh, I'm going dis to discuss Osgood Schlatter disease today. Uh, I have no disclosures, unfortunately. So um, just a brief sort of introduction here. Um, I know a lot of you guys treat pediatric uh, patients and adolescent athletes uh, on a regular basis. But um, what one of the things that makes them unique to us, other than uh, developmentally they are uh, scuttily immature, their growth plates are composed primarily of cartilage and so are susceptible to both acute and overuse injuries. Um, we, we talk about the, the growth plate being the weak link in the chain, and so that's uh, part of the reason that we see a lot of um, growth plate issues. And when we talk about common overuse injuries today, we're discussing common growth plate overuse injuries. So just to review that the, the physis is the growth plate itself um, the, in through here. Uh, the epiphysis is the longitudinal growth center. The metaphysis is sort of the portion that's widening into bone here. The diaphysis is the, is the shaft. So an epiphysis adds length to a bone. But an apophysis with an A adds shape or contour to a bone, and, and it's typically a spot where a muscle or tendon will attach. Um, and so some of this what I talk about is a little apophysitis. Um, so our, our case is going to be a 12-year-old male basketball player who comes in presenting with gradual onset of anterior knee pain. Uh, his pain is worse with activity when he kneels down um, or when he bumps it on something. He doesn't really recall any specific history of injury or trauma to the knee. And uh, upon presentation, you notice, or he complains of localized swelling, uh, and, and he has tenderness over the, the tibial tubercle. So, Osgood Schlatter disease, what is it? This is tibial tubercle apophysitis, also known as Osgood Schlatter disease. Um, this was described by Dr. Osgood and Dr. Schlatter back in 1903, so it, it's been recognized and around for a long time. Um, but the name is still very scary to families, so I reassure them that it is not a disease that Dr. Osgood and Dr. Schlatter wanted to name something after themselves. Um, and so, again, it is an apophysitis. This is a traction, repetitive traction uh, induced inflammation of the tibial tubercle apophysis. You can see that the, the extensor mechanism comes over the top of the patella, the quad. Uh, quad tendon and the patellar tendon and the attachment on the tibial tubercle apophysis with repetitive ex knee extension, running and jumping, um, that, that repetitive traction causes inflammation. Um, and so therefore, they will have uh, tenderness over that um, tibial tubercle. So uh, more common in boys than in girls, a, a little bit older boys, about two years shift over the girls. Um, it can be bilateral in about 25 to 50 percent of patients. They are gra usually gradual onset of symptoms due to repetitive activity without a specific injury, or sometimes they'll present saying that they have fallen on a flex knee, and that may have uh, initially aggravated the pain, and then they've continued to have activity-related pain following that. Um, oftentimes, we'll notice that they'll have tightness in their quads or rectus femoris, um, and parents will often note that they've had a recent rapid period of growth. Um, they are highly active um, youth athletes, um, and sometimes overweight and obesity may be associated with this. The chief complaint is typically pain and swelling. Often they'll notice a bump, and that bump may be concerning to them. Sometimes families are presenting more because they're worried about the bump itself than they're worried about the pain, so reassuring them about that. Um, typically aggravated by activity. On exam, they'll have point tenderness directly over the tibial tubercle uh, and the distal portion of the patellar tendon. Um, there's often enlargement of the tubercle, which is firm uh, on palpation. And um, sometimes when you fully passively flex their knee and, and add tension to that quad tendon, that will also exacerbate their symptoms. Imaging is not necessary uh, in routine cases, um, but if you want to get x-rays, an AP and lateral film may sometimes be helpful um, to exclude other pathology. And uh, on the lateral radiograph, you may see some of the uh, fragmentary ossification there. So you can see um, here where the red arrow on the right is showing um, the soft tissue swelling overlying, um, as well as some of the fragmentary ossification, and then sort of a typical presentation of what you may see on a patient um, here when you walk in the, uh, the exam room to evaluate evaluate them is that bump, that classical bump there. So reassurance, I think, is really important, uh, letting the family know that this, this may come and go for a couple of years while they're actively growing in that particular area. Um, and our goal is to help manage their symptoms so they can continue to participate in their sports. Uh, ice and NSAIDs, anti-inflammatories may be helpful, especially after activity. Oftentimes, I'll recommend an infrapatellar strap, uh, what is sometimes referred to as cho a chopat strap or a patellar tendon strap. 
and but stretching, I spend a lot of time focusing on stretching with them to try to um, loosen up and give them more flexibility and decrease the tension of that uh, patellar tendon on the apophysis. If they're not getting better, oftentimes we will refer them for physical therapy, but most of the time we can try with a home program uh, initially. Um, in, in some recalcitrant cases, uh, you may consider uh, prolotherapy or hyperosmolar dextrose injection. Usually when I consider this and discuss this with families, the, the pain's not that bad. They don't want a needle in their knee. Um, and so they they're usually say, okay, I, I'm, I'm not that bad. I'll do my stretches now. Um, and then they'll improve, but we will do that sometimes. Um, we don't recommend steroid injection into the area. Um, and, and very rarely, um, especially after a skeletal maturity, they may be referred for um, surgical uh, removal of the, of the ossicles if they remain symptomatic. I do recommend protective padding um, so that when they don't fall on it, it continues to cause trauma and pain and through there. Um, but really, they're allowed to participate as tolerated. If they're not limping and they're not having a lot of pain, I think it's fine for them to participate with, with this. Um, it is rare to have an avulsion fracture of that spot. So again, relative rest as opposed to complete rest activity is tolerated. Uh, just one other caveat is to think about is a similar uh, uh, presentation is uh, sending Larson Johansson or SLJ. Um, this is apophysized at the inferior pole of the patella, so very similar, just a different part of the patellar tendon there, a little bit younger age, um, and sometimes a little bit more challenging to treat, so sometimes you may want to refer those on a little bit uh, sooner. So key recommendations, relative rest as opposed to complete rest. Um, I really think stretching makes a big difference. Patellar straps and sometimes will help with symptoms. Ice after activity, NSAIDs as needed. Uh, physical therapy and some may be helpful. But really spending a lot of time reassuring and educating the family on what this is and, and that it's gonna be okay. All right, and I'm done. One or two questions. Does anybody have any questions for Dr. Miller? Uh, well, do you think every kid that comes in with tibial tubercle pain that needs an x-ray? And if so, when do you recommend getting an x-ray? Yeah, so I think if, the, if they come in with the classical presentation of tibial tubercle apophysis or Osgood slaughters, um, depending on your setting, then they don't need uh, x-rays. Um, you know, I think if there has been a trauma um, and, you know, they've felt a pop or heard a pop or there's been some acute inciting event, then those I tend to recommend an x-ray because there may be an increased possibility of an avulsion fracture. Um, but otherwise, um, we don't necessarily think that they routinely need x-rays. You want to add to that? <laughs> so you talk about you talk about uh, doing prolotherapy mm -hmm. or or intervention to uh, Oshkosh slaughter because they can be fairly resilient for long periods of time. How, how long will you treat or how long will you keep a child out of activity before recommending an intervention? Yes. So uh, in terms of the prolotherapy, um, I think that those are the ones that are struggling to continue to participate in their activity. Um, you know, the ones that are saying, yeah, you know, my knee hurts, but I'm doing fine. I don't really have any limitations functionally or, or pain wise. I'm not having to, uh, to sit back and they're usually content with it. Um, but the ones that are that are struggling and, and are not able to perform at their higher level functionally or the pain is just so so um, taking them over, then I will discuss that option with them. Um, but, but I usually don't um, discuss that until we've given them several months of conservative management um, and, and I've ensured that they're following through, um, you know, the recommendations and that we've maximized them from a flexibility standpoint. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Dr. Miller.